What accessories go on a metal roof? How do they affect engineering? Today we talk about clips, fasteners, underlayment, and more. This is another Q&A Monday on the Metal Roofing Channel. Welcome back. Uh, today we've got John LaBava on the episode for the first time. Adam Mazzella is back again. And I'm Thad Barnett from Sheffield Metals. Today we're talking about metal roof accessories. Check in the description. There's quick links. So you can jump to any of the questions we talk about today. Thanks for being on the episode with me today, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Dad. Let's talk about what accessories go on a metal roof in general. So, John, can you tell me a little bit about that? What goes on a metal roof as far as Yeah, sure. Sure. So um, you have your clips, uh, both engineered and non-engineered clips. Um, you have all your roof sealants, your underlayments, uh, your fasteners, uh, butyl tape, um, pop rivets, S5 attachments, even touch-up paint pens. Okay. We carry those as well. So that accessories really have a, it's a really broad range of stuff that goes onto the roof in addition to the actual panels and details. Yeah, there's definitely a lot that goes to it. Yeah, for sure. Um, so for standing seam metal roof, roofing specifically, let's talk about what kind of differentiates, you know, a, a good accessory versus a better accessory? What, what kind of makes that difference there? Well, when it comes to fasteners and things like that, it, it's really, you know, if you've got a clip screw, you know, a clip screw is going to look a lot like, you know, your your typical screw that you're going to pick up at a hardware store. But um, you're not going to want to use that. You're going to want to use a, uh, a screw that's been, you know, usually galvanized coated or some sort of coating that's going to protect it long term because it is an exterior screw specifically designed to either hold a panel down in a fastener flange hole or... Uh, hold a clip down and so you want something specifically designed for the roof um, you know beyond that you know when you're talking about underlayments things like that not all underlayments are created equal um, you know so you've got something that'll do the job whether it's a you know non-synthetic underlayment you know a slip sheet things like that that's been proven to do the job for years and years but the synthetic underlayment market, you know, peel and stick, synthetic underlayments, ice and water shields, as these have developed over the last couple of decades, you know, that's taking something that's worked for years and continually developing and getting it better. Um, you know, beyond that, you know, if you have uh, exposed fasteners, you know, you've got a painted metal and an exposed fastener, you know, you don't want a fastener that you're touching up in the field. You want something painted to match uh, to begin with. You're gonna have less labor, uh, you know, you're, you're not worrying about matching paints, things like that. That's something that the manufacturer or the supplier uh, should be able to match up, matching the roof uh, to the fastener as well. So okay. when you're talking sealants uh, and things like that, there's some sealants that hold up to UV better than other sealants. Now, the idea of a sealant is you don't really want it exposed and visible. Right. It kind of defeats the purpose of it. But inevitably, there are sealants that are visible um, in some cases, and you want something that's going to be hold up better to UV and weather and degradation over time. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of great products out there. Um, you just want to make sure you're using, you know, the best one for your roof and your application. And from a homeowner's standpoint, um, you know, a lot of that's going to be up to the contractor, obviously. So that's why it's, you know, so important to find a good tr contractor. You can trust that they know what's going on the roof. They know what products are the best, you know, for the best price. Yeah. Yeah. And, and from our standpoint, you know, we, we like to, to partner with vendors that provide great products. Um, you know, they're uh, products that are going to be economical, but it's also products that we believe in, we stand behind as well. So... Yeah, so let's let's talk about engineering a little bit because um, do accessories affect engineering or an engineered system? How do accessories affect that? Yeah, so you know when you're talking about uh, you know an engineered system, that's really what it is. The the accessory itself generally is not engineered. Now you can get engineering done on uh, uh, fasteners as far as pulling out of a particular deck. So a fastener you can figure out where that fastener will fail in a piece of plywood or a piece of uh, B-deck that it's uh, fastened into. Similarly, you can do clip pull out, clip pull over. So they would do a test where they attach that clip to a, you know, a deck and then just do a pull out on it. And, and you get an idea of you know, how many pounds per square foot or pounds uh, uh, per square inch that these clips will pull out at, that the fasteners will pull out okay. at. But, 
that's not generally recognized as engineering. When you talk about engineering, you're talking about the system. So it's the combination of the metal roof panel uh, combined with the clips, with the fasteners, and kind of bringing everything together. Um, you're really not testing uh, clips by themselves or fasteners by themselves. You're testing a system. Um, and then beyond that, it's also going into the construction and design of the system. Um, you know, you're going to want to make sure you're at the appropriate clip spacing. Uh, and that clip spacing could change uh, based off engineering requirements, whether you're in the field of the roof or whether you're in a corner or an edge of the roof as well. So a lot of things go into it. It's not cut and dry, but the, the answer, uh, your question in a very long-winded way, accessories don't make engineering. You know, the accessories that I'm holding here, we have a clip that we use in our engineering and then a clip that's not used in any, in any of our engineering. That doesn't mean that this clip is engineered. It's just a component of an engineered assembly when constructed uh, per our engineering, right. that system has okay. engineering. When you use this clip, you never have an engineered system, unless we went and got engineering on it. So, right, right, right. so if a system is engineered and the roof is then installed with a replacement product that wasn't part of that engineering, what happens? Does that, does that affect the engineering at all? Yeah, technically, it's not an engineered system then. So both of these clips, for instance, are two-inch mechanical clips. Um, one of them is specific to our open framing engineering. One of them is specific to our plywood BDAC and BDAC with ISO engineering. If you interchange these, meaning if you took this clip and used it for an open framing application, that engineering would be null and void. It wouldn't okay. be applicable. Um, and similarly with this clip, if you use this, this is only available through our open framing engineering. So, you know, we, we come across that and we get questions like that regularly. Hey, I used a, you know, a economy inch and three quarter snap lock clip. I did it at two foot on center. You know, can I use your guys' engineering or can I submit it? And the short answer is as difficult as it may be is no, um, you don't have an engineered system. And it's not that that clip's not engineered, but that's not the clip that we used in our engineered right. system. So what about Sheffield? What can Sheffield provide as far as accessories go? Well, we carry and stock a full line of accessories. So all your clips, whether they're for an engineered or non-engineered system, your sealants, your butyl tape, your pipe boots, um, all your underlayments, your S5 roof attachments, um, touch-up pens uh, for, for paint, um, and, and pretty much uh, the fact that we stock it, uh, we've kind of become that one-stop shop for our customers. Right, yeah, yeah. So why is, why is that so important that Sheffield carries this? Well, I think a lot of times um, guys will run out of stuff on a job, and they need to be able to know that they can run out to us and grab what they need. Okay, sure. Um, sometimes they're literally in the warehouse picking something up. And they all of a sudden the thought occurs to them. Like, that oh they, yeah, it's probably <laughs> exactly yeah. like oh I forgot to get some fasteners. So um, we're able to obviously get that to them pretty quickly. And then for those those situations where we're shipping, um, we can actually throw boxes of fasteners or pipe uh, pop rivets or whatever right in their coil. Sure. So it saves them money on shipping. Yeah, as that's well. great. Another thing that kind of goes into the, the philosophy of it is, you know, saving our customers money by them not having to have too much inventory on hand at any given time. You know, we realize that our customers um, can't always bring in 35 colors of rivets and yeah. uh, painted fasteners and things like that. Uh, we realize that beyond that, they might use our dark browns, but the next project might be somebody else's. And those might not match. So the idea is, you know, they're going to be able to bring in accessories as they need them, when they need them, because we've got them on hand. Um, you know, you're cutting one PO to one company rather than five POs to five different companies. At the same time, you're getting, uh, you know, your metal for the project. Um, you know, so the philosophy or theory behind the, the one-stop shop is to really take care of our customers on a job-by-job uh, basis where they're not extending their cash, you know, out beyond that job uh, if they don't have to. Right. So when it comes to being a one-stop shop, is there any standing seam roofing products that you don't provide maybe? Yeah. And it, it's really, you know, beyond being brand specific, um, you know, there's certain brands of roof attachment or underlayments, things like that. We're going to stock the ones that we've partnered with. Um, but beyond that, it's really curbs. Curbs are kind of one-off, and I say pre-manufactured curbs are kind of a one-off. Every penetration on a roof is custom. Every skylight yeah. is going to be custom. Um, 
And people generally, we require people to use curbs when it comes to uh, our weather tight warranties and non round penetrations. Um, that's typically the best install method. They are costly. Uh, so, you know, when somebody needs a, a curb, we, we push them to one of our trusted partners that offers warranties on pre manufactured or uh, welded uh, 20 year warranted curbs. Okay. So when it comes to accessories of metal roofing, there's a lot that varies, even between standing seam and exposed faster metal roofing. So we hope to help educate you a little bit on accessories of metal roof. Be sure to subscribe to the Metal Roofing channel for more videos. Comment below with any questions. Again, I'm having a really fun time answering all of your comments. Um, anything else, check us out on Sheffield Metals Online, and we'll catch you next time.